for another day of
Does does yeah it works? I think. Uh, hello. I gotta hold it though. In the world unknown. Oh, it's working. Hello, check, check, check. Check, 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 hello. Um, Are they coming in the drive? Check, check. Hello, hello. Okay, awesome. Well, we're gonna get started. So we're just gonna ask all of you to just close your laptops for a couple of seconds, please. Thank you. Okay, um, I've lost my voice. That's why I sound like this, but we're gonna get started in just a couple of seconds. So Rishi and Sid are going to be our MCs for today and they are going to start us off. Okay. Hello everybody and welcome to the 2023 Innovar Summit. I was just about to ask who's excited, but now I guess I know all of you are. So the theme for today's summit is a world without STEM. So it's very easy for us to take things for granted in this day and age where technology is so prevalent and it's everywhere around us. But today we kind of want to show you guys a couple of forms of technology that are really overlooked. Uh, things, really, really small things that make such a huge impact in our lives. And that's kind of at the heart of what we want to talk about at this, at this summit. We really want to show you guys the impact that all this technology and innovation has on our day-to-day -day lives. So with that, um, we just want to thank you guys for coming out today. And uh, we hope you guys enjoy. So before we begin, can we please have a big round of applause to celebrate Innovar's five-year anniversary? Uh, we just wanted to say that this is a great first step into all of your futures into the world of STEM. And we hope that you guys leave today with the greater knowledge and understanding of how you can shape the future through innovation. You should all be very proud of yourselves for taking the first step in investing time into yourselves today. So like Krishi said before, my name is Rishi and this is Sid and we're going to be your MCs for today. So before we begin, we'd like to introduce our co-presidents of Innovire, Krishi, El, and Abdullah. And uh, Kushi will now be giving us a land acknowledgement. Okay, so it's really important that before we start anything here at Innovire, we always do a land acknowledgement. So I'm just gonna read the one that we use um, and then we'll, we will slowly transition into further activities. So as a council, we acknowledge that the land we're on is stolen land and that we're uninvited guests on unceded First Nations territory. Specifically, we are on the land once populated by the Anishinaabe, Huron Wendat, Haudenosaunee, and Ojibwe Chippewa peoples, the land that is home to the Métis, and recently the traditional territories of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. Specifically, the land we are on resides as part of the lands included in Treaty 13A. This acknowledgement reminds us of our important connection to this land where we live, learn, and work. And by doing so, we give our respect to First Nation groups, Inuit, and Métis, past, present, and future. Our work does not start nor end with this land acknowledgement. Rather, it serves as a reminder of our ongoing efforts to recognize, honor, reconcile, and work with Indigenous communities whose lands and waters we benefit from today. 
As a council, we commit ourselves to deepening our own understanding of local indigenous communities, to reframing our responsibilities to land and community, to ensuring that we are modeling a practice centered on relationships and decolonization and reconciliation, and to empowering the lived experiences of racialized and marginalized communities. Thank you so much, and we will now proceed with the rest of the event. Uh, I just wanted to welcome all of you here today. Uh, I know Rishi and Sid and Krishi already have, but um, I wanted to do it myself. Um, five years ago, when we started Innovire in 2018, when uh, most of us were in grade seven, uh, we didn't think we'd be here today um, after five years and um, hosting one of the, actually our biggest event yet. Um, so we're all very happy to have you here today. And um, for many of the grade 12s here, this is our last year at Innovar. Um, so this is our last, one of our last Innovar events. Um, so this is a bitter, bittersweet moment, um, but we hope you all enjoy. Um, thank you. Yeah, we really hope that everyone takes this opportunity today to learn something new and to get to know some new people. We really started this organization as a way for other people to connect with each other and also be inspired to take on STEM opportunities. So we really hope that you use this as a learning experience. Awesome, so with that, we have gotten a lot of questions about volunteer hours, if you have to leave, why the Wi-Fi isn't working. Don't worry, we're troubleshooting everything behind the scenes. Um, you don't need internet access until like the second half of the day anyway. So we're gonna try and troubleshoot things from our end. And then if you still don't have Wi-Fi by lunch, um, come find any of us in a black in a buyer t-shirt or a black in a buyer hoodie, and we'd be more than happy to help you. In terms of volunteer hours, please, 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 if you need your volunteer hours, meet me at the end of the day, I will sign your sheet. If you do not have your sheet, that's okay. We will be sending you a letter with your volunteer hours. Now, I know some of you have to leave early and that is completely okay, but because a lot of you are under the age of 18, we can't just let you go. So you need to have um, per parental permission. So you need to come see me. Um, if you can't find me, find any other exec and we will direct you to me. Please check out with me um, so I know that you're getting like picked up or you're leaving with parental consent because otherwise we cannot let you out of here. And that's about it. Does anyone have any questions before we start? Okay, yes. Did you have a question? Okay, awesome. In that case, I'll pass the mic over back to Rishi and Sid. Okay, uh, before we start, just one last round of applause. We'd like to thank Ms. Jackson and Mr. Jansma for all the help and support that you've given us over the past couple of years. So now let's delve uh, right into the program. So our first speaker for you guys today will be Alan Smithson. Alan Smithson's purpose in life is to inspire and educate people to think and act in a socially, economically, and environmentally responsible way. Alan makes tools for professional creators, including Metaverse, a creation pl platform for the future of human communication, collaboration, commerce, and culture featured in Forbes. The mall, a 100M SF virtual retail and entertainment destination built on the Metaverse engine featured in VentureBeat. Alan is an investor slash partner in your director AI automatic face tracking video switcher, a board advisor to H-Star, a new space transportation company, and a board advisor to Orbital Quantum, a quantum sensor startup. Named one of the most prominent digital futurists to watch out for in 2022 and a top retailer influencer in 2023, Alan is a proud father, business leader, TEDx speaker, and podcast host. He co-invented the world. Good. Oh, okay, thank you. Sorry. Um, he co-invented the world's first touchscreen DJ system emulator featured on Dragon's Den and G4 TV and wired and won DJ Mag Innovative Product of the Year in 2011. Everyone, please welcome Alan Smithson. Thank you so much, guys. Can everybody hear me okay? You good? Okay, great. So we're going to put my presentation up here. And I want to say, first of all, a huge thank you. This is the second, uh, second or third time I've spoken uh, at Intervirus. So thank you so much for having me. And when, the, when they asked me to speak this time, they said, we want you to give a talk on the world without STEM. 
So a world without science, technology, engineering, and math. Think about that for a second. If we had a world without STEM, this is what it would look like. We would be pioneers. We'd be still riding horses, maybe. We would be building houses out of wood. This would be our existence, and maybe it would be better for the environment, but not so much for the 8 billion people on this planet. So I want to just take a quick second to acknowledge that if we didn't have STEM, we wouldn't be in this building. We wouldn't have electricity. We wouldn't have projectors. We wouldn't have microphones. We wouldn't have any of the things that we take for granted today. How many people here have a smartphone? Everybody, right? You wouldn't have that in your pocket. You wouldn't have the world's knowledge at your fingertips at any given time. So with that, I'm going to start with making something cool with you guys. So let's make a poem, and I'm going to read it using ChatGPT. If you haven't used ChatGPT yet, how many people have used ChatGPT? How many people have not used ChatGPT? Okay, ChatGPT is just uh, chatgpt chat.openai.com. Go on, it's free. You can sign up. You can start making stuff. Um, it'll help you. So what I would suggest is use it to help inspire you and learn quickly, but don't use it to write your papers because it actually writes really crappy papers. But here's what we're going to do. I've put in a prompt to write a 100-word poem to inspire 13, 18-year-old students to pursue a career in STEM. And let's see what it comes up with. In galaxies deep or atoms flight, STEM whispers secrets day and night. Mathematics, the universal tongue. In physics, celestial songs are sung. Engineer dreams, bring them alive. With biology, let your curiosity thrive. Chase the unknown, yearn to learn. For it's in discovery, stars you'll earn. Don't fear the complex, the abstract, the new. In the language of science, write your view. Look up, look down, question, infer. In STEM, become the future's pioneer. That's pretty awesome, right? And that was all done real time, as you guys saw it. We're also going to make a piece of art. So give me a word. Did somebody can throw out a word. Rock. OK. Give me another word. Go ahead, up in the back there. NASA. OK. Uh, NASA space, space rock flying through the cosmos. All right, so this is um, Discord. If you haven't uh, used Discord, it's just a Discord channel, but I'm using a product called MidJourney. If you haven't used MidJourney, it's like ChatGPT for graphics. So what it's gonna do now, it's gonna do that. And while it's doing that, I'm gonna go back to the presentation here. There we go, it's, you can see it's doing it real time and it's gonna create this and we'll come back to that after. So what does a world without STEM look like. I know they introduced me, so I'll, I'll skip all this part. Uh, I've done some cool stuff in tech, but um, one of the things I'm really proud about is the, the companies that I've been able to be part of. This is one of them. We created the emulator, which was the first, first multi-touch application for Windows in the world. It came out before the iPad. This giant see-through screen came out before the iPad. And this is what it looked like uh, when we worked with DJs around the world. And we had a very, lucky run to work with some of the biggest artists in the world and you'll see some of them in here uh, how many people know flow rider look out for him in here That program was a couple million lines of code. This is our new product, Metaverse. And we've built a 3D game engine on the web that allows you to build 3D uh, experiences and deliver them to any device anywhere in the world. So this is our mall. It's going to be a 100 million square foot mall. And so it's all built on our 3D game engine, kind of like Roblox, but a little bit higher resolution. So instead of having blocky characters, you can have real looking characters. We just built the Juicy Burst for Starburst, too. It's pretty awesome. Thank you. 
So that's what we do. That's what I've been doing for the last decade of my life. So I took a, a, a mid-journey prompt, the one that we just did a, a second ago, and I did a prompt called A World Without Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. And I just put the AR as the aspect ratio, so if you were looking for that. Uh, and this is what it came up with. It's kind of cool. I don't know what it means, but this is what the computer, this is what a, a large language model thinks a world without STEM looks like. But what it really looks like is this pencil. How many people have used a number five pencil? Pretty much everybody, right? It's a universal tool. This pencil hasn't changed in 100 years, 150 years, something like that. But I guarantee you that without an entire global network, you would not be able to make this pencil. Because think about it. There's carbon for the lead, for the, for the middle piece. You've got to form, form that, forge it, make it into a tube. You've got a wood pencil, which you have to make the wood and then actually carve a hole in and put the lead inside. You've got a piece of metal at the top that holds the eraser on. And that metal has to be forged from some sort of metal, aluminums, whatever. You also have paint on the pencil. And of course you have rubber on the, on the tip of the pencil. No one person on earth could build this pencil in today's society if you didn't have any technology with you. It'd be impossible to build something as simple as a pencil. And this is why the collective knowledge of this planet, now at your fingertips, and now able to make sense of it using AI, is really the antithesis of the subject of a world without STEM. And I really don't want to talk about a world without STEM because we can't even make a pencil with that. So let's move on from that and let's talk about what can be and what is in the world. So Take a look at this. This is a, a potential future. Just that it shows that today's youth will suffer the most in recent world events. Economists fear global instability could lead to uncertainty in the job market for years ahead. Since 20 something, since 2021, it could say more than ever this journey into the unknown. Tell me something I don't know. No, no, no. no. Journey. Unknown. Journey. Unknown. Journey. Unknown. Here's a schedule. The president of Brazil's indigenous region has announced that the Amazon rainforest has regrown to 90% of its former size. Is this for real? Please welcome our next guest, Alex Richinski. Thanks. The older. <laughs> this time, the tech maverick has done something impossible. That's him with a real live dodo. Officially on its state. I'm extending to you for the Now, color change. This is where it all started. But how exactly did it empower a whole city using just photos of this? Let's just say it's all in the Guys, remember the still scholarships available for my skilled academy. Where you can train alongside the best to be the best. So don't be a stranger, be a player. So here it is, fully funded and ready to go. I want to thank you all for your hard work and she will kill me for this, but I couldn't have done it without this one. If you're the best one, I don't know. 
Told you I was good. I think that video pretty much exemplifies what you guys have in your future. You guys are the real future of whatever happens to this planet, good or bad. It's all in your hands. And it's very exciting because we have built enormous amounts of technology that you now have and everybody has. Let's look a little bit of the history. We've had a trillion fold increase in power and the same decrease in cost. So in 1975, it was uh, $33 million for a computer the size of this room, okay? And today you have the same power, more powerful actually in your phone. The evolution of technology, we've gone through several iterations where you know we had the steam engine and then we had electricity and now we have computers and now AI and, and robotics and space travel and all the things that are coming now, we're in this kind of exponential growth curve of humanity. And if you look at the pace of change, how many people, uh, how many people again use ChatGPT? Show of hands, roughly a quarter it looks like, roughly a quarter of the people here. ChatGPT was the fastest growing app in history. It, it, it reached 100 million people in something like five days. It's obscene the speeds at which we're moving at. So I just want to show this to, to let you know that things are getting faster. And today is the slowest day it'll ever be. So look at this. In 1956, that's a five megabyte, megabyte, not gigabyte, not terabyte, not petabyte, a five megabyte hard drive. It was the size of a small building. Look at the size of the thing. And now you have a one terabyte card in your phone. So we've had a trillion fold decrease in cost, a trillion fold increase in power. And now we're building chipsets that are down to two nanometers. We're almost down to the molecular level, being able to print things at the atomic level. And this is where we get into the idea of quantum computers and it gets really exciting. In the last 36 years, call it, call it 37 years now, uh, we went from a brick cell phone. Anybody seen the ones on the far left? Have you guys ever seen that thing? It's kind of, maybe if you go to an old pawn shop or something, you'll be able to find it. But man, I remember my friend had that very first phone, that big, huge brick one. And I made a, a phone call to my mom from the Blue Jays game. And that's to show you how old I am. I'm a little older than you guys. The evolution of technology and gaming is massive. The one on the left is, a, is, I believe, a ColecoVision. I had that when I was a kid, and it was like, you know, wood paneling on it, and now we've got a PS5, which is mind-blowing. This is a, a little bit of a montage of the graphics from the beginning of hockey to where we are today. You can see the graphics have just undergone massive growth. This is cool because this is a pit stop in Formula One in 1950 versus 2013. But Holland comes in for a pit stop. Time to refuel and change tire. Look at him whacking on the wheel. The changes the tire. Only four crew members, including the driver, are allowed to work on the car. It's the tenth time. Holland stays in his seat, anxious to get away. Let's watch. Oh, finally got the wheel off. Even the driver has time to get a coffee. Oh, now he's got to do tire two. It's kind of ridiculous, painful to watch, actually. Okay, guys, get the wheel on. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. The tires are changed. The tires are in. A crew man polishes the windshield as Holland moves away. There we go. 67 seconds after he stops. 67 seconds. Now, here's 2013 Formula One. Don't blink.
That's the difference between where we were and where we are now. So with new circuits, we're also inventing new ways and new materials. Things like graphene can give us uh, different ways to stack chips on top of each other. Because right now we're kind of running out of space. We're down to one nanometer. You can't go much further down, maybe half a nanometer. But we're going to have to start stacking chips up, which is kind of cool. Anybody seen this thing? There's a, a company called, uh, I can't remember what the company's called, but they're making a thing called WorldCoin. And the idea is that they're going to use this orb scanner to scan your retinas and lock you into a, a blockchain type thing where it knows who you are. Instead of just having a passport with your photo signed by some random stranger, you're going to have a retinal scan where it knows exactly what you are. And this is a, a guy, Sam Altman, who's also the CEO of uh, OpenAI, which makes ChatGPT as well. And he was also uh, one of the, uh, well, he was the CEO of Y Combinator, a giant uh, accelerator in the US. NASA and SpaceX. Now, I want you, it's important to look at the dates of these things because these things have already, already been announced. But look at the dates. These are not you know, 20 years from now. These are happening now. NASA and SpaceX are building a moon base. They just announced a, uh, a huge uh, contract for Amazon to do it as well. Whoops. Sorry, let me go back one. Neural implants. Uh, as of yesterday, actually, or two days ago, um, Neuralink got approval to put uh, by the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration in the U.S., to put uh, sensors, uh, neural link sensors inside of human body. Uh, U.S. Air Force is building uh, rocket uh, cargo uh, transport. So I am an advisor for a company called H-Star Space, and they're doing heavy cargo uh, anywhere on Earth in under an hour. Imagine being able to transport a building's worth of stuff anywhere in the world in under an hour. Because you kind of go up, the Earth goes around, and you land. Researchers are benchmarking AI-generated code. So AI can already code now. So the job of the future is coding, right? What if AI can code and does a better job than humans? So that's where we're at right now. And Google just announced a couple of weeks ago that their AI coding bot can code in 20 different languages. AI is the everybody's new electricity. And everybody's very open. It will change everything. What if you decided that you have 400,000 data analysts in a warehouse, air conditioned warehouse, ready to do work for you right now? How would things change? How would that be different? What would be possible? This will be the, the greatest technology humanity has yet developed. The world is new again for the first time in 14 years. And, and there's so much opportunities. You have to be able to throw out what was old and you have to be able to think big and you have to realize that there's going to be different mental patterns and and, and feel comfortable with those different mental patterns. And that's where you're going to get your visionary founders. It has come out of decades of research into the algorithms to manage data. But now we've just reached a point where the processing storage and the processing speed and all that has allowed us to put these large language models together to do things that are really amazing in the same way that the smartphone was amazing, in the same way that the internet itself was amazing. And it's just going to touch every industry. I mean, who doesn't want a copter pack, right? Like flying cars, okay, we don't have them yet, but th this is a thing. I mean, it's ghetto and it, you know, it looks like a science experiment, but it works. Imagine what you guys can do. Think about the possibilities in all of these types of things. Like this guy's literally flying on a mini drone thing. Like this is nuts. We're having genetic code breakthroughs, we can now sequence the entire human genome, which means we can prevent health problems before they start. We can keep you healthy longer, which means we can extend human life. Right now, I think the average human life is somewhere around 80 years. We can extend that to 100 average, which means people are going to live to 150. What are you going to do in your lifetime? In 150 years of your lifetime, you're what? Less than 20 now. Think about that. You guys have enormous amounts of time to build anything in the world you want. So rather than thinking what job do you want to get, start thinking about what problem in the world you want to solve and focus on that for the rest of your life. And you've got years and decades to do it. Brain and spine implants help restore a paralyzed man's ability to walk. This happened this week, uh, May 25th, last week. Crazy. Astronauts are printing organs in space so that when we go to Mars, we can actually print organs, we can grow food, we can do things and be a multi-planetary species. 
CRISPR technology allows us to decrease cholesterol using uh, using um, um, recombinant DNA um, changes. Anybody seen this? The Beeple NFT sold for $69 million. I mean, we are creating ways to create and sell and monetize digital art like never before in human history. Carebots, having, there's going to be a massive uh, growth in the retirement industry. All of your parents, your grandparents are getting older. They're going to live longer and they're going to need some care. And so we don't have enough people that want to care for them. So robots are going to um, take place of that. Anybody know this guy, Peter Diamandis? If you don't know him, look him up. Peter Diamandis uh, founded the XPRIZE Singularity University. He has a thing called Future Loop. If, you, uh, if you're on your phones, whatever, go to futureloop.com and you can sign up for his newsletter. He's also written a few books. The Future is Faster Than You Think, Bold, How to Make a Spaceship, and Abundance. I recommend all of these books. They're excellent and great way to kind of inspire your brain to think bigger, faster, and more... Um, more global. Future Loop is the one I was telling you about. It's a newsletter that comes every day and tells you all the new stuff that's coming out. Elon Musk, uh, I think there's probably some more stuff added here. He just keeps building companies. Uh, I didn't add Twitter because I forgot about it, but yeah, he owns Twitter now. And uh, yeah, just think, think about this. One person, one human is responsible for all that innovation. So you guys can do it too. If that guy can do it and he's not that smart, I mean, think about it. Like he gets on Twitter and says dumb shit, pardon my language. But that guy, I mean, if he can do it, you guys can do it. For sure you can. Have you, does anybody know what this is? This is a space elevator, our concept of a space elevator. And a space elevator is a giant thing floating in space with a giant rope or like, you know, uh, elevator that goes all the way down to Earth. And Earth, Earth's rotation keeps it in orbit and keeps it there. And so we can travel up and back and forth to space without having to use rockets. This doesn't exist, but somebody's going to make it. Yes? No, no, no. It actually sticks out of the Earth. Imagine just sticking straight out of the Earth. And as the Earth rotates, there's a, there's a, a force that's pulling it out, out towards, the, out towards space. So you have a nice kind of this rope all the way down. It's like a rope, but it's the size you can actually tra travel inside. Yeah? Check this out. The future of mobility. Think outside the box. This is not even a tire. Like we already have those things, right? We got, we've seen those on the road. A lot of the stuff that we think, oh my God, it's going to be future. We already have it. What about a flying copter? I mean, this is cool. This is actually is this. This is a Bell uh, helicopter that was shown off at CES a few years ago. It's really super cool. I don't know if they have it made yet, but it looks like something out of Avatar. Jetpacks, we have them. Check this out. This is, what does the future look like if we have full augmented reality? Seguro que no hay más trabajos disponibles. Estudio para ser profesor y estoy haciendo mercados. Y además puedes quedarte con los puntos de fidelización. Eres una noche infortunada. Tienes que confiar en la aplicación. Te sientes más nada. Gracias. Chao. ¿Quién soy yo? No, no es lo que quiero decir. ¿Para dónde voy? No, puedo volver a empezar. Volví a lo how many people want to live in a room like this? No, definitely not. It's terrible. We do have virtual and augmented reality, though. We have these two technologies that we can learn in different ways. We can put on a VR headset and go inside a human heart, for example. You can start to learn ways that you've never been able to before. And I think that's really exciting. I don't know that I want to wear it all the time every day in that kind of experience, but using these technologies to learn is really exciting. This is a meta-human creator, 
And what IQP it is, wants many. check it out. Je pourrais être architecte. Ou guide. Qui fait un artiste. You create the narrative. I commit to human. Digital avatars are a long way from the Roblox characters you create. This is where we're going. Awesome. Uh, I won't play this one, but Neuralink has, has figured out how to get a monkey to play Pong. It's kind of interesting. I'll let you look that up. This is a new and project by Google. Glass, it allows playing. you to have telepresence through other. a giant 3, 3D screen. Thing. And it uses sensors to create the 3D oh depth. Oh my gosh, I will. <laughs> <laughs> so you look beautiful. And then you just start having a conversation, just like you would if you were physically together. Like, I feel like you're. It's really cool. Uh, if you guys have a phone, you can scan this QR code. I've got a, a solar system demo that, uh, that is up there. So you can scan this QR code and try it. I'll leave it up for five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, virtual reality for learning. China's already doing this at scale. Um, you can learn all sorts of things. Imagine learning how to drive up uh, a train. How cool is this? And it's completely safe because you can't really crash it in a virtual scenario. You can learn to weld using virtual technologies. You can learn to do on-the-job training, just putting on a pair of glasses. You can use augmented reality to try on makeup. You can now invest in digital goods using cryptocurrencies. How many people uh, have cryptocurrency? Anybody? Amazing. What do you? Have? What kind of cryptocurrency do you have? Speak up. Ethereum. Awesome. Cool. Ethereum, Bitcoin. The, uh, the, the Chinese government, as of today, this morning, they actually um, allow, uh, re allowed, because they blocked it, they re allowed people to invest in cryptocurrencies. So we should see some interesting stuff coming out of that. I, I predict that in the next, let's say, 10 years, we're going to see the demise of cash. In Canada, we don't use cash all that much, but in the US, they still use it. Um, Norway got rid of cash altogether. But I think the physical cash is going to be uh, a thing of the past. What about robots? They can do the things we don't want to do, like cook. Imagine what do you do in a world where robots do the cooking or perhaps the dancing. I couldn't dance. You didn't even want me around. Now I'm back to let you know I can really shake them down. The crazy thing about this is five years ago, that thing couldn't even stand on its own. It was all attached to cables and it was all, and now it can dance around. Now, what scares me about that is they're going to weaponize that. So, you know, use it with what you will. What about having an extra pair of arms and hands? That'd be pretty awesome, right? How about a mech warrior? Who doesn't want to drive a mech warrior? These things exist. Solar farms, being able to generate unlimited power for humanity. This is a, a, a solar dish in space that collects solar energy and beams it down to Earth. This does not exist yet, so it's something you could work on. What about lab-grown meat, vertical farming, crickets as a protein source, 3D-printed food, quantum computers, quantum computer chips. This is a quantum computer, uh, IBM's quantum computer. There's a quantum computer lab at Waterloo. I was just there three weeks ago. I saw one of these. They have a quantum computer. There's several, actually, at University of Waterloo. There may be even one on this campus. I'm not sure. 
what will the next 10 years look like for you guys? Here's 18 jobs of the future, and I, I won't read them all, but here's some of the jobs that are going to be future proof in the next 18, uh, in the next uh, decade. Augmented reality storyteller, ethics officer. What happens in an age of AI? Do we need to maintain ethics and make sure we don't uh, make things bad for the rest of the world? Future of employment, I think AI algorithms are going to do a lot of the work for us, a lot of the office work. And we're going to see, obviously, we saw the rise of the gig economy that will continue. And I think the really, the new, new is going to be entrepreneurs. So you guys creating jobs, inventing things, I think is going to be the future of this. My uh, ultimate goal is to build a new education system, one that teaches these types of things, as well as uh, interpersonal skills, success principles. And really, we have a new vision for a new education and economic system for the exponential future of humanity. And our mission is education and economic prosperity for everyone everywhere. And so these are the key components to that. And um, I want to say thank you very much to Innovire. Thank you guys for listening. And if you want to reach out to me, I'm right here. I'm also on LinkedIn. Thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate your time. Let's see. Oh, wow. Let's see what we made. So this is what we made, the space rock flying through space. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Smithson. We have a gift for you. Um, it was a really insightful presentation. Thank you so much. Do what you can do. There you go. You should have it now. Not again. Okay, perfect. So um, once again, thank you so much to Alan Smithson. I think that was a really good intro to focus on what a world would be like without STEM. So now we're going to kind of move on into our first competition of the day. So as you can see, those are the teams. Uh, we'll get onto that in just a sec. But um, it's going to be our first team challenge. Okay, And the winning teams are going to have the ability to win prizes. So make sure you guys are putting in your 110%. Okay, So our first team challenge is going to be building a bridge. Okay, but not just any bridge. It's going to be a bridge that can open and close, and you're going to use hydraulics to make it move. So I want you guys to everybody, listen up, please. We're going to get organized into the groups that you see on the screen. So find yourself, uh, find your team number, remember your team number, and find the people in your group, and I want you to sit with them. I'm giving you guys five minutes, okay? We can all get organized. So wait, wait, before all of you start moving, hold on for a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to have teams 1 to 20 on the top half and then teams 21 to 41 on the bottom half. Teams are final and cannot be changed, by the way. Uh, oh, shit, it is, yeah. Oh, you can use it. Sorry. You can use it, but yeah, 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 it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I'm so sorry. I will go back in just a minute. Sorry about that. There you go. Sorry. Sorry about that. No, I just put up on the desktop too. Yeah, I'm just going to slide. 